Krishnavanshu Tiwari. He is a senior gynec oncologist. He is a professor and director of research, principal investigator of the NRG Oncology and GOG Legacy at UC Irvine. He is also the director of the gynec oncology program at St. Joseph Center for Cancer Prevention and Research. And he is also director of continuing medical education department of obstetrics and gynecology from University of uh, California, Irvine Medical Center. So he will be speaking on the talk, robotic surgery versus laparoscopy, the basic difference. So now everywhere we are seeing that the robotic surgery has been upcoming. So uh, laparoscopy has been totally replaced by the robotic surgery. So he will be talking about the, the basic differences between robotic, what are the advantages between the robotic surgery and the laparoscopy. Happy to be. I'm uh, very, very honored to be here. Uh, really um, been looking forward to coming to the master course in gynecologic oncology. I'm going to uh, talk about robotic surgery this morning um, and try to um, sell you on robotics. I do not get paid by Intuitive um, Surgical that makes the Da Vinci robot. I don't have any stock in the company. Um, and so I'm here to just share this, share my um, experience with you and try to sell you on the robot, but I have no financial gain or a dog in the fight in terms of revenue. So <coughs> completely unbiased. Now, um, I'm a GYN oncologist in Southern California, and I've had the privilege through the Batikuti Foundation to come to India about every eight months for the past few years to different um, centers. This is the fourth workshop I've been a part of, and I've been proctoring um, gynecologists and gynecologic oncologists in robotic surgery, and it's just been very rewarding. One of the um, things that has been extremely satisfying for me is to see how much energy um, and time the physicians in India, the surgeons in India that are interested in robotics in all the different specialties, whether it's urology, um, head and neck surgery, they've um, invested a lot of time in the quality of the work that I can see from the videos that I've been watching is equivalent to what I see in the United States. And so um, it's been, it, I think that robotics is the, um, it's, as far as surgery goes, especially in GYN oncology, this is where we're moving um, towards. And I think that in the United States, uh, it is the standard of care to do a, a endometrial cancer operation through the minimally invasive route. Whether it's robotics or laparoscopy, that's up to debate, but um, in the United States, most people are doing it robotically. One of the um, things that I've learned coming to India um, for the past two years is that Indians followed a different trajectory surgically than did um, doctors in the United States. Doctors in the United States followed the examples in the UK. The UK never embraced minimally invasive surgery. And so most surgeons, especially GYN oncologists in the States, were open surgeons. And they were not doing minimally invasive surgery, even in the early 2000s and mid 2000s, when laparoscopy um, became very prevalent with uh, benign gynecologists. So the advent of the robot allowed GYN oncologists in the United States to go from being open surgeons to minimally invasive surgeons. And so it was very easily accepted. India is a little different because what I've seen in India, especially with the gynecologists in India, many, many gynecologists in India are doing phenomenal laparoscopic surgery. And in that regard, you didn't follow the people from the UK, you followed the people in France and Germany that really pioneered laparoscopy. And so when I come here, it's a, a little bit of a harder sell to um, discuss robotics with many Indian surgeons especially benign gynecologists because the Indian gynecologists are already doing minimally invasive surgery and so they don't see what the point of doing the robot is and some of them are very, very skilled. What I'm here to tell you all and especially the people that raise their hands that are doing oncologic surgery laparoscopically is you can be a better surgeon. I don't care how good you think you are laparoscopically, you'll be an even better surgeon if you do it robotically. So um, let's talk about this. So I've only got 15 minutes. This evening I'm going to be talking specifically about endometrial cancer, cervical cancer, and ovarian cancer, and, in, in, and the uh, correlation with robotics. But I've been given 15 minutes this morning just to compare and contrast robotics to laparoscopy. And what I'd like to really do is start off with um, 
comparing open surgery to minimally invasive surgery first, because it seems like there's uh, quite a number of people here that do open surgery still. Um, advantages and disadvantages. And when I say minimally invasive surgery, I'm combining laparoscopy and I'm combining um, robotics at first. But then for the second part of the 15 minutes, I'm gonna compare laparoscopy to robotics. And then we'll take some questions. And then I think in about um, 30 or 40 minutes, I'll show you a little video of one of the robotic um, uh, operations we do. So open versus minimally invasive surgery. There are definitely advantages to open surgery. We all know that. The first one, of course, is tactile feedback. We can feel what we're doing. We can take out large things intact when that's necessary. We heard our excellent speaker just before me, our pathologist, uh, ex um, explaining that she likes to receive the organ intact. So if I've got a very big uterus and I can't get it through the vagina, I ain't gonna do that robotically or laparoscopically. She's getting an incision. Um, <coughs> We can do more complex surgery for the most part. Liver transplantation, can't do it with a robot or a laparoscope, um, but probably everything else can be done. Even exoneration can be done robotically, but for the most part, and again, people that can do pelvic exonerations with a minimally invasive approach, they are few and far between, but in the general population of surgeons, everyone would agree, the much more complex surgeries have to be done open. We have quicker control of catastrophic hemorrhage if we have an incision. I think everyone would agree I th our, that there was a beautiful surgical anatomy um, uh, lecture before our pathologist. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of the speaker, but she uh, was talking about the fellow's vein and pressure and everything. And so you, you, if you're open, you can get quicker control of catastrophic hemorrhage. But what you'll learn is that with minimally invasive surgery, you rarely have that happening because you see better. Um, and it's a generally quicker operation. A quicker operation means less exposure to general anesthesia to the patient, less OR costs, and more efficient use of the surgeon's time, whether the surgeon wants to golf or do more cases. So those are advantages of open surgery. No one's going to deny it. I was trained as an open surgeon. I, I had the um, privilege of being trained in an era where my people in the United States, my professors in gynecology, hated laparoscopy. So I got no laparoscopic training. And then when I finished training from 2000 to 2008, I learned laparoscopy on my own. And then in 2008, I switched over to robotics. So I've been able to do every, all three um, areas. Disadvantages of open surgery. Here we go. Vision's not magnified. Unless you're a neurosurgeon wearing loops and working on you know, nerves, what you see is what you get. And one of the reasons minimally invasive surgery is associated with less bleeding, less blood transfusion, less complications, is not just because we're doing more complicated surgeries open, but because we can see better. Everything's magnified with minimally invasive surgery. Increased blood loss and need for blood transfusion. Again, this may reflect that we do more complicated things open, but if you look at every study, now and there's, there's been very few prospective randomized studies open versus minimally invasive, but in every retrospective study comparing a certain procedure done minimally invasive, whether it's laparoscopy or robotics, versus open, there's less blood loss, less um, bleeding, less transfusion. Increased perioperative complications with open surgery, need for hospitalization, and that increases hospital cost. Um, longer time to recovery. Uh, if you do an open surgery, the patient has their Foley catheter longer, um, longer before they start eating regular food, before they're on oral pain medications, uh, longer time before they go home, before they can drive, exercise, go to work. And then there's complications with incision. Incision causes more pain. Um, cosmetically, it doesn't look as nice um, when you have a long incision. You can get a wound cellulitis, a superficial wound separation requiring antibiotics and packing, a wound vac if the, in, the separation is very large, hernia formation requiring a return to the OR, placement of a mesh, the mesh is a foreign body, it can get infected, um, bowel evisceration, patient can get acidotic and spend a lot of time in the ICU. And if none of those things happen, Open surgery is associated with the formation of adhesions. Adhesions can cause pain and discomfort throughout life and sometimes can result in a, sm in a small bowel obstruction. And um, small bowel obstruction can mean a trip to the hospital, nasogastric suction, TPN, maybe even return to the OR. So these open surgery should um, really go away. Minimally invasive surgery, the advantages are the disadvantages of open surgery. Vision's magnified with minimally invasive surgery. Less bleeding, less need for transfusion, lower complications, shorter or no inpatient hospitalization. 
In India, they, you know, the patients are scared. They get a minimum, minimally invasive operation, whether it's laparoscopy or robotics, they don't want to go home. In America, we don't give them the choice. Now we send patients home the same day. Right after robotic surgery, we have a number of papers that show even in the cancer patients, same day discharge is fine. Um, a shorter time to recovery if you do minimally invasive, all those things we talked about, and fewer complications with incision. We really don't have problems with cosmesis, wound cellulitis, wound infection, evisceration, all that stuff. Um, as long as you close ports that are 10 millimeters or bigger, you won't get a hernia either. Um, disadvantages of minimally invasive surgery, loss of tactile feedback, can't feel what you're doing. Um, can't take out large things intact, can't do super complex operations, and again, there are people that can do complicated things. I mean, yesterday, I sat here, right, or right there, and um, at the uh, Robotic Surgery Council of India, I watched video after video after video of surgeons in different fields of oncology, not GY oncology only, doing the most amazing things that um, I don't even see this stuff done in the States. Um, catastrophic hemorrhage, not easily controlled, but you rarely have that happen with minimally invasive surgery. And it's a, generally a longer operation, but after a while you get quicker. Okay, so now for the second part of this, I want to compare operating with chopsticks that are rigid, straight, to robotics. And to be fair, laparoscopy has advantages over robotics, four of them. You have haptic feedback. You don't have tactile feedback, but with the, with, by putting instruments in and having your hands on the instruments when you're doing laparoscopy, you can feel where you are, you can feel firmness, nodularity, what have you. So you do have haptic feedback. With robotics, you have nothing, nothing like that. Um, you do not require prolonged steep Trendelenburg for laparoscopy. And if you are in the steep Trendelenburg position for a while laparoscopically, you can take the patient out of it periodically as you're um, doing your operation. With robotics, once you're docked, you're stuck does not require commitment to a rigid port configuration. W again, with robotics, we put our camera in one port, we have instruments in the other port, it's a rigid configuration, and there you are. You've got the pelvis to deal with and you can't go anywhere else. That's where you are with laparoscopy. You have the advantage putting the camera in an umbilical port or a suprapubic port, looking up in the upper abdomen, doing other things. And then finally, laparoscopy is less expensive than robotics. The robot costs about $2 million as, as a startup. It, takes, it costs about $100,000 a year to maintain it. To get the OR personnel trained, the hospital loses money because the OR people have to learn about robotics and learn how to um, drive the machine and all that stuff. The surgeon loses money at first when he's learning robotics because my first robotic hysterectomy, you know, I couldn't really pick the patient. It's whoever came to me first, obese lady with a grade two endometrial cancer, seven hours. I was in there for seven hours. It was torture, sigmoid colon falling, you know, it was horrible. But my second operation, five and a half hours. My third one, two hours. And now I can do a full hysterectomy, pelvic and aortic nodes in about an hour and a half. And it's as good as an operation as I do open. And it takes, it's I learned, I learned to get quicker or better and faster quicker. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so, the robot um, is called the Da Vinci robot. Leonardo Da Vinci actually designed the first robot. This is um, an example of his robot that's been reconstructed through his notes. That's why they call the robot the Da Vinci. Now, advantages of robotics are as follows. And this is why it's the superior operation. And I want everyone here to, if you have a robot in your hospital, start learning how to do it. And if you don't, um, lobby your hospital to get one. It's the, it's a steeper learning curve than laparoscopy. What does that mean? It means it takes fewer cases to get proficient. If you have on your x-axis the number of cases you're doing and on the y-axis proficiency, with laparoscopy, the learning curve is shallow. It takes a long time to get good. With robotics, you will be comfortable in 10 cases and you'll be good in 20 cases, guaranteed. And there's a reason for that. Vision's magnified with robotics, just like laparoscopy, but laparoscopy is two-dimensional. Robotics, it's 3D. You can see so well. So when I hear all these great laparoscopic surgeons in the United States saying, I will not have a robot in my OR, I'm a great laparoscopist, I do fantastic laparoscopic radical hysterectomy, well, guess what? They can do better. You cannot argue that if you can see better, 
you're going to do a better operation. And I don't care how good a laparoscopist someone is, you can't see as well with a 2D monitor than you can with 3D. By doing 3D, you have increased depth perception. That allows you to get good at robotics easy. It's not counterintuitive. The robot is, or the company is called intuitive because robotics is intuitive. When you do laparoscopy, if you want to move your instrument to the left, you have to move your hand that's holding that instrument to the right. It's ridiculous. With robotics, you're, it's just like, it's, it, with robotic surgery, it's as if you're inside the patient's body and you're sitting there doing the operation. It's as if you're doing it open. I encourage anyone here that's gonna be in Bangalore, uh, Bangalore for a few days to go to the Vatakuti Technologies um, International Headquarters. They have a robot there. Go, work, go practice on it. <clears throat> All right. It eliminates the need for an assistant to hold the laparoscope. So as a surgeon, you have complete control of the laparoscope and it's steady. It's not shaking. And it's exactly where you need it to be every second of the operation. Wristed instrumentation. Remember, laparoscopy is operating with chopsticks. It's rigid, it's fixed. With robotics, the robotic instruments articulate. They recapitulate the seven degrees of motion of the human hand so you can do easier sewing, more complex dissections, get under things that you can never do laparoscopically or, you have to do, or if you do it, it takes a lot, a lot of time. You have superior precision, dexterity, and control with these instruments. It's unbelievable. There's less complications, less blood loss, less blood transfusions than with laparoscopy, and there's a less, uh, less of a conversion rate from uh, robotics to laparoscopy. I've done over 2,000 robotic operations. I've opened five people. And um, two of it was because the patients were very morbidly obese and they couldn't tolerate the steep Trendelenburg. It was early in my career as a robotic surgeon. And I realized now with the very obese people, rather than putting them directly into Trendelenburg, we do it stepwise, put them, in, put them in a little bit, let them acclimate, a little more, a little more, and then you dock. Um, I don't think those two patients that I opened early in my career, I would have opened any more. Um, the robot has motion dampening sensors so that when you're doing laparoscopy, you're torquing in, um, at the port sites, moving things around, bruising things, causing, it'll cause a little bit of pain for the patient. With robotics, the surgeon, even if he has, drinks a lot of coffee and he has a tremor at the console, nothing's transmitted through the robot to the patient. And so many patients just take some ibuprofen for pain um, management afterwards. <clears throat> As I said, uh, significantly reduced conversion rate compared to laparoscopy. It's ergonomic. Again, the laparoscopic surgeons that are great, great laparoscopic surgeons, I applaud them. But why do you want to stand up and get twisted into a pretzel doing a complex operation when you can sit down, take your shoes off, see in 3D, and do a better operation? And it's the best option for the morbidly obese patient. No, make no mistake, operating on the morbidly obese patient is very, very difficult. You make an incision, not only is that incision going to get infected post-operatively, but you're operating deep in the pelvis. Sometimes instruments aren't long enough. It's torture. You can't even do a good node dissection on the super obese patients when you're open. Laparoscopically, it's hell because you're fighting the abdominal wall the whole time. Robotics, guess what? It's hell also, but it's the easiest of the three because at least once you got the ports placed and the robot docked, you don't have to worry about that abdominal wall anymore. Robots holding up, up the whole time and you're sitting down comfortably. Shoes off. Okay, so why robotics? This is the, I think my last slide. It's a better operation. It's more precise. It's safer, less complications and less conversion than with laparoscopy. Look at any study. See, it's very hard to do randomized studies open versus minimally invasive because Surgeons have their bias. An, a great minimally invasive surgeon is not going to want to randomize their patient to a study where they're going to have to open them. But they've done randomized studies, laparoscopy versus robotics. And uh, laparoscopy is um, associated with higher conversion rates, higher complications. Less blood loss and less need for blood transfusion. Superior oncologic result. What do I mean? There's no randomized studies that will prove it, but just sometimes you don't need a randomized study to um, learn something obvious. They didn't do randomized studies with parachutes, right? They didn't throw some people out of a plane with a parachute and some people with that. But when you can get much clearer and cleaner, good margins around your cancer, when your lymph node counts are higher, when you have less bleeding, less post-operative morbidity, it's a better operation. So, um, and it's best for obese patients. So that's a little bit of a um, 
background I wanted to provide with you, um, and we'll go to the next lecture, and then in a little bit I'll show you a couple videos, and then tonight I'll talk specifically about robotic applications in cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, and even ovarian cancer. And um, again, it's a very, very um, big um, honor and privilege for me to be here. I was born in India, my parents are Indian, and for me to, you know, grow up in the States and learn uh, medicine and then come back here and be able to contribute, it's a big deal for me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Krishnan Shu. That yes. was an excellent talk and uh, presentation. Uh, now I'm happy to take questions if we're caught up. We allow for two or three questions. Okay. Now, recently even endocell, articulate endocell has come. Have you had any experience with that or anybody is using it? Then? The what? Snake. Uh, snake. Vessel sealer in there. Oh, yes, yes. They, we love it. So, um, so the vessel sealer, so I don't use it. <laughs> I, I'm, um, I like my monopolar and my bipolar or my PK, but my partners love the vessel sealer. Yeah. The advantage of the vessel sealer is it has less thermal spread. Now, I've not had complications from uh, robotics with thermal spread or anything like that, and so I'm still um, haven't switched over yet, but my partners love the vessel sealer. It's excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.